Hello everyone, welcome to our Google Cloud Database's Fireside Chat. Today we'll be hosting John McDougall, founding engineer from Ravelin, to learn more about how they are using our databases and specifically Cloud Bigtable. From Google, we have our very own Andy Goodmans, VP and General Manager for Cloud Databases. And I'm Ron, I'm from Andy's product team. So just to kick us off, Juno, can you tell us a little bit about Ravelin? And Andy, you can take it from there. Hi, Ron. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Ravelin is a fraud detection company. We do all sorts of different fraud, such as credit card fraud, account takeover, supplier fraud, voucher abuse, and, and a number of other different fraudulent areas. Um, and we do that for big e-commerce uh, clients as well as uh, large enterprises. So what they'll do, what our clients will do is send a, a request to us when they have a transaction go through and we'll run it through our machine learning models um, to figure out, you know, if this looks like something dodgy or not. Um, and then we'll respond to that client and say, hey, okay, maybe you should check out um, this customer. Maybe you should block them uh, or just give it some more scrutiny. Jono, thanks for joining us today. So what are some of your industry's technology challenges? Uh, yeah, so our industry, um, I think the challenges are pretty similar to, to other industries. You know, we worry about scale and we worry about um, uh, keeping our latencies low. But um, because we are um, a fraud detection company, whenever we get a client, uh, we bring on the, the entire data and throughput of that client. So uh, I think uh, some of those needs are, are a bit exaggerated compared to some other industries. We don't get that sort of natural growth we get uh, sometimes um, in, in other industries. So we really need to make sure that our um, our, our, our throughput and our, our scale uh, can really you know, cope with any time, say, sales come in with a big client. Um, the other issue is, of course, we're in all of our clients' checkout flow. Um, so they're sitting there waiting for us to make a decision so their customers can buy things. So we have to make sure that um, you know, our, our latencies are, are low enough that we don't interrupt that at all. Yeah, and we all know that online retail has really been booming over the last year. So I can imagine the kind of scale that you have to deal with. Um, so I know you're using Cloud Bigtable. What kind of use cases are you using it for? Yeah, so we use Cloud Bigtable um, to get data out every time uh, we make a, a fraud decision. So when a client comes in and one of their customers does an order, we have to get the full history of that customer. We have to get as much data as we can about that customer to generate features to, to try to detect if they're fraudulent or not. Um, uh, to do that, you know, that's, that's quite a bit of data and quite a short timeline. So Bigtable is quite good at that. You know, if we have sort of a key for the customer, we can quickly get that specific data uh, and bring it into our feature extraction to um, um, uh, uh, generate features for our models and our, our, our rules. Um, so that's kind of the one use we have for it. The other use we'd have is for our dashboard. We, um, uh, we will present a customer profile in our dashboard to our clients so that if we make a fraud decision, we can um, uh, have our clients look at that and you know, analyze if they, if they think it really was fraud or not. Uh, and they can use the same sort of data source that we have for how we actually made the decision. Um, occasionally, we also use it for, for some debug information. We put some request logs and some trace information in there as well, um, mostly because we have spare capacity and it. it's just a really fast, nice place to put it. So what drove your decision to use GCP and Bigtable? Yeah, so we, we had a bit of a journey to get there. Um, we were originally on Postgres. I think uh, most startups will start with something like Postgres since it's easy and it's what you know. Um, but we quickly realized, you know, scaling that's going to be a challenge. Um, and we didn't, we didn't want to have to manage uh, uh, these enormous Postgres instances. Um, so, you know, we, we knew we wanted to go somewhere else and we wanted to use um, uh, some kind of key value store because we weren't doing crazy joins or complex where clauses or anything like that. We were really just saying, hey, here's a customer ID. Please tell me everything you know about it. And that's where key value kind of really shines. Um, we'd used Cassandra at a previous company, um, but managing that was a chore. Um, I know we've, we had to hire a bunch of people who all their entire job was managing Cassandra. Um, so that, that was, we wanted to go with something managed is what I'm trying to say here. Um, so we, uh, we looked at Bigtable, we looked at a few other, other solutions. Um, but, um, with GCP, we were also really into, um, BigQuery. We were heavy users of BigQuery already, and um, we really liked what it was doing. We also wanted to go to Kubernetes, and um, uh, this was about five years ago. So um, 
Google was definitely uh, uh, one of the few that were, were really helping on that side. Now, now I think a lot of the other cloud providers do it, but I think Google's still kind of the top of that, that stack any, um, as well. So that's good for us too. Um, yeah, there's a few other things we liked about Bigtable. I mean, it has this, this versioning capability and we, we did do one weird thing where we did upserts and the versioning really helped us with that. So um, I think some of the features were also important there for making that decision. So we know migrations are super hard. Uh, they're especially hard in an always-on industry like yours. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your migration journey? Yeah, um, it's kind of terrifying migrations. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, when you want no downtime, it's, it's really challenging. So um, what we did was uh, we were migrating not just from Postgres to Bigtable, but also from AWS to GCP. So um, to do that, uh, we actually set it up um, where we had a queue which would sort of asynchronously push every request we got um, uh, over to GCP. So we'd be running in AWS just as we were previously, but at the same time, um, we were sending requests over to GCP. And we could then go back and look at those requests, see if any were failing, see if the results were the same as they were in AWS, and just look at response times and things like that. And we did that for about a month. And so we could tune things just how we wanted uh, as if it was live. Um, we then one day, one scary evening, we flipped a config flag and it was hundred percent over to GCP. Um, but the other thing that happened was at the exact same time, it flipped the queue, um, over to AWS. So we were actually still sending traffic into our, our legacy environment. Uh, and the nice thing about that is if anything went wrong, we could fail back and we weren't missing data. Um, and we ran like that for about a month. We never had to fail back, but it was very comforting to know that if, <laughs> if it all went bad, we could, uh, we could go back. Uh, so we were briefly multi-cloud redundant, which is nice. <laughs> it's really, really impressive how you pulled off uh, the kind of seamless online migration between clouds. Uh, kudos to you and the team. What are some of the other things you think our customers should know about Bigtable? Um, yeah, so if you're using Bigtable, one of the most important things to make use of is the key visualizer. Um, I don't know. I don't know if a lot of customers know about it. And it was used to be a bit hidden in the UI, but now I know they've put it right to the front, so um, it's quite easy to find and it's extremely useful. I mean, if anything ever goes a bit wrong, um, if you get some latency or some errors coming back from Bigtable, it's always the first place we look because you know, not every time, but a lot of the time, it'll be we have a hotkey or a wide row, um, and the visualizer will just tell you, and it'll tell you the exact key range that that key lives in and that or that row is. Um, and you can go in and 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 try to try to fix that um, at that level. So it's really really useful to to know how your data is actually hitting Bigtable and know if you're using any anti patterns or if your clients have changed their traffic pattern to to um, uh, you know exacerbate some issues. So I think that's the sort of you know the primary thing I, I think people should be aware of if they're not. Um, the other really cool feature is garbage collection. Um, it's really nice. I mean, if you find a, a, a big row, um, it makes it very easy to make sure that doesn't happen again because you can put some limits on how big they can actually get um, with the garbage collection policies. Um, and the other thing that we use quite a lot is the versioning. Um, Bigtable has a sort of 3D, it's kind of like a 3D array, right? You have your, your rows, your columns, and then all your cells, which are the different versions. I think it's really common for people to just use sort of the latest end filter and not not really look at any of the previous versions. But you can make use of that versioning to um, to get history. You can do uh, clever things. You can reverse the timestamp. There's a few patterns in the docs that are quite useful. Um, so you can get like the, the instead of the latest thing, you can actually get the oldest thing if you need to. Um, yeah. So I think the versioning stuff. There, there's a lot of cool patterns you can do with that. Awesome, thanks. Uh, I really love the key visualizer myself. Uh, I think it's just super helpful to kind of see what the access patterns are and how to see, you know, which keys are hot. If you could ask us for one more feature request, what would that be? We have quite a few big table nodes now because um, we're we're at a, a fairly big scale and it starts to starts to end up costing a bit of money. <laughs> But our our traffic patterns are such that you know we we don't always run our hottest our hottest um, uh, uh, CPU or, or 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 what have you. So it'd be really nice if you guys had auto scaling for Bigtable. Um, 
uh, during our evenings, I think it could save us quite a lot of money. And I do know there's some open source stuff out there, but you know, standing that up um, and making that work is always a bit of a chore. And if you could just make it push button in the dashboard, we'd, we'd, almost, we'd use it for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thanks for the feedback. I mean, as you know, we can uh, do zero downtime scaling. There is an open source project that helps customers with auto scaling, but your feedback is very well taken and watch out for the space. Uh, you know, we will definitely uh, try and prioritize auto scaling. Um, and hopefully you will see some news from us sooner rather than later. So do you have any workflows that span databases and analytics? You mentioned machine learning before. Like, how are you using kind of the overall data state uh, that we have and data services uh, to achieve your goals? Yeah, so Bigtable works really well for our online fraud detection to sort of get one customer record and their full history and operate on it. Um, but it's not as good at getting, say, you know, every single customer record to train on it or to say, give me every customer with this very complicated where clause who, you know, only ordered something on a Tuesday that had, you know, whatever. Um, they can't do any of that really. So um, we also use BigQuery heavily. Um, we essentially put the same data in both Bigtable and BigQuery. Um, we send that data in um, asynchronously to BigQuery um, using streaming inserts. And um, that allows our data scientists to come in and they can mess with the data all they want. They can, they can query it in every way you can imagine um, and build models and investigate patterns and all that sort of stuff um, and, and not have to worry about how, you know, limitations of, of the query, query uh, engine. Um, it also means it doesn't impact our, our big table cluster, our production cluster when they do that. It's a completely separate cluster. So them doing a big query has no impact on our response times. For example, back when we were on Postgres many years ago, uh, that wasn't the case. <laughs> that was a large portion of our outages. Um, yeah, so I think uh, uh, big query is really good in that regard. Uh, we also use Elasticsearch um, for um, powering our dashboard. Um, and that's just to do sort of a bit faster than BigQuery, but a bit slower than Bigtable style queries. Uh, can you take us, um, the engineer in me kind of wants to know a little bit more of the nitty gritty details with, with regards to Bigtable. So how are you store and what kind of the schema looks like? What what do you have for uh, for sales? And yeah, so we... Um... Uh, we do use cluster replica replication, but uh, I guess I'll first talk about how our data is structured. We actually originally had everything spread across rows. So we'd use sort of a hash of a customer ID as a prefix, and then we could scan, you know, each record of history from that customer. So it'd be an order, an order, a transaction, something like this. We could scan all that out, but we found eventually we got customers that were too big. Um, and that scanning wasn't quite as fast as we wanted. Um, so we actually switched over and we put everything into a single row. Um, so you basically look it up by the customer ID, um, and then each column is a sort of different entity, um, within that customer. So you'll have like an order column, you'll have a transaction column, a payment method column, things like this. Um, and then each cell will be a different record, um, uh, a different order, a different payment method, different transaction. So you can look up the one row and you can get all the details of that customer you need. And that was, that was really, that's really fast. Um, it also makes it very easy to use garbage collection to um, clean up any really big customers. Or in our cases, we occasionally have clients who send us test customers who do an order like every minute. And that very quickly becomes uh, problematic if you want to pull out you know, enormous amounts of data like that without any limits um, on your row size. So, so being able to use the garbage collection is really useful. Um, we also use replication for um, reliability. How we do it is um, a single request uh, needs to have that consistency. So within a request, we always hit the same replica of Bigtable. And if we, need, if we have a failure and we need to retry, we retry the whole request. So that might involve a, a number of calls to Bigtable um, to get different data um, uh, and also to write data. So um, that allows us to sort of make use of the replica and also make use of some of the um, the, the consistency guarantees. Um, so it's a cool, it's a nice little trade-off you can make. You can kind of choose where you want your consistency to live. Jono, thank you a lot for joining us today. It was great hearing about Ravlin's journey in delivering market-leading online fraud detection with Google Cloud and Cloud Bigtable.
Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Thanks, Andy. Pleasure. Jonah, thank you so much for being here with us today and telling us how Revlin provides fraud detection solutions to its customers using our products. And Andy, thank you so much for hosting. On behalf of everyone here in Google Cloud Databases, thank you for watching and see you on the next Fireside Chat.